here we go. Okay, so this is not going to be necessarily a short video, but I am going to try to be as concise as possible. This video will cover resources you're using for all four assessments, templates I've made for all four assessments for you to use individually. Embedded in those are resources that are very helpful, that have helped in the past, but also are replete with resources with feedback from IB on what happened last year or the year before for candidates who did not do very well or advice about what candidates did to have a stronger uh, presence for a particular assessment. So here we go. First off, I have in, oh, I guess I don't need that, um, in Schoology, in the IB Assessments folder, let's click right here on the film portfolio. Here are links to the things that I'm about to refer to. So this is a link specifically to your stuff. Now the real folder here is a general folder that all these people have access to. It's a place to dump in, in this case, a video file so that we can take a look at it. This is the actual document I will be showing you today, the template that you'll be filling out. So each one of these templates will be the document you use all the way through the development to your final version. And don't make copies, just keep using this document because we're also gonna use it for peer review and for me to give you feedback. With a lot of people testing, um, losing track of files and versions of files becomes a real problem. So we, we want to tame that dragon. So here we go. So first off, let's start with the uh, collaborative film project. This template has been shared with you and I'm gonna go through and explain a few things. First off, you can see here your draft of the report, that's the paper thing, is due with the dates up here and then your final draft is due here as well. You will put your film into this directory. I just showed you what kind of what that looks like is I've created a group directory for us to put our files in for our draft so we can take a look at that and give feedback. You'll have somebody proofread and that name will go here and we'll do that later on when we get closer to our draft review. I will do a review as well, but I will be doing it after revision one. So you'll make modifications after this person proofreads it, then I will take a look and give you feedback. I'm allowed to give you concentrated feedback once. So I'll take a look at it, highlight deficiencies, places for you to develop your uh, the strength of your work. Uh, without being explicitly detailed, I will again point to certain things that you might wanna work on uh, to improve your, your work. Uh, now, moving through here, this pattern is going to be very similar to all four assessments. For instance, this right here is information about the collaborative film project from IB. And so you want to read through this, and it's the IB's official directions. It's only a few pages. Uh, so you want to read through that, of course, to understand what the assessment is. The command terms are linked in all four assessments. It's just two pages of terminology that your IB uses. You work in IB, so you understand that most of these terms are gonna be things you're already familiar with, but I just wanna have it here to make sure. This is an overview document, single page, um, I think, <laughs> to that, well here if I click on it, that gives you a rundown, okay, it's a page in a little more, of all four assessments. If you're SL or HL, how much it's weighted uh, percentage-wise, but also the, the quick overview of the requirements for the assessment that should be helpful to kind of give you the big picture. So that's right up here. The subject report, this is something you want to dive into. It is advice from IB, and I've gone in and bolded, whatever that word is, bold, <laughs> bolded, uh, both in red, red meaning watch out, and uh, the bold text is things to make sure you're including in your process. Um, I try to explain this to students every year the red stuff is like you really need to pay attention to this and really get this on your radar early on in your work for the assessment. Failure to read this means you're going to probably fall into the same pitfalls that many students have in the past. And it's frustrating to watch students do that. So please know that I spent the time building all this and putting all this together and highlighting all that text because I really want you to consider it, put it in there. This is college level work, but you're still in high school. so. We are a stepping stone to getting you to a collegiate level. Making this template is part of that stepping stone. Um, bringing all these resources together in one place is that stepping stone. You're still doing the work, which is college level work, but I find most students fail 
to organize properly at a high school level. Now, you hear me talk about that all the time. Get stuff out of your head, into a trusted system. This is the nemesis for most high school students moving into college. And if they haven't developed that process, they're really in trouble. So I'm helping out with breaking things down step by step. So read this, read this, read, you know, read these one at a time to process them, to get an idea of what's expected of you. Um, these are posters. You've seen these before. And if you go in here, all four of them are there for all four assessments. It starts with text analysis. So if you click on that, it is all four. And I just, I labeled it this because we're on this assessment. Um, this is a website. I want to show you this, uh, that has numerous resources for the various assessments and other material. So this is run by another IB film teacher who is amazing. Uh, I've met them at a conference and, uh, Holy cow, good stuff. So why re reinvent the wheel when we have resources like that you can dig into? The rubric. This is IB's official rubric, so you want to take a look at that. Again, it's not terribly detailed, but it gives you an idea of what the expectations are for the highest brackets of each component. And remember, everything that's written, you really need to take a close look at and think about IB's command terms. What are they specifically telling you to do? Um, focus on the verbs. If it means explain, that's a higher level of depth, supporting your statements. If it's described, you just make a statement. And that's fine. Most students fail to explain and just describe, though they think they're explaining. And that leads me to this right down here. When we're proofreading each other's work, students who make a statement for what? The filmmaker did this. That's fine. That doesn't mean anything. Without, why did they do it? And how in film language does that create the effect? The why and the how are super crucial and that's where your higher score is going to come through through all four assessments. So in your written explanations or when you're explaining in the comparative study, uh, your narration, you're going to be doing what, why, and how, what, why, and how. You know, that's gonna be the rhythm you're in and we will help and we will color code. So when you're a proofreader, you're gonna go through and find a what, okay? You talk about the camera angle. Why? why? Why did they use that? Or how is that camera angle furthering the intention of the director or the, of the scene? You know, you, you have to dig deeper. And if you don't know, that's where you can throw question marks. Like, I know they did something here with the camera angle or with the mise-en-scene or with sound or whatever. And you can go, it looks like they had a reason for it, but I don't know. And that's where we can talk and discuss and support you with that. So just know that this is the rhythm for all of our writing is you make a what statement, then a why, then a how, or some combination thereof, okay? You always have a why or how after a what. Um, in this particular assessment, you really wanna break it up into these two chunks. And um, when you read through the directions and the feedback from IB, you'll find out that people who don't score well don't do this. They don't really focus on both components. So if you're thinking about this before you really delve into the guts of your film that you're gonna work on for quite a while, this will really help you focus on what you actually need to exhibit for your role. You should be really competent in your role. You should have made a number of films in that role. You should feel comfortable with the terminology of cinematography, directing, screenwriting, etc., and feel like you have some depth. You have some professional people that you've examined, you've studied, you know it makes them tick, uh, what they're known for. All of this should be in you before you start this project. And if you're feeling like you're not there yet, that's fine. But now you know it's like this should be your celebration of your best work uh, so far. And the portfolio is practice to get there in three different roles. And then you pick your probably your best role, and then you would continue on with that. All right, so that's this template. Now let's go over here and look at the film portfolio. And again, just refresh your memory here. Here is the film portfolio. And when I'm at the IB assessments piece, like if I were going into the collaborative film project, you would see... Here is where you'll put your film, the draft, and the final, and here's your report, the document we were just looking at, but it's linked only to you, and it's not shared with anybody else, it's just yours. Uh, you are the only editor on it, and we'll share it with somebody else um, as editor so they can proofread and put comments in there when we get closer to, well, when you're done with your draft. Uh, all right, let's move back over here. So uh, the template is fairly similar. You're gonna notice this pattern is similar to the other document. Um, ooh, let me go back here and just highlight something that's pretty important. So this is just the front loading. Then there is a cover page that has to stay in this format, otherwise 
it will not be assessed. This is crucial. Uh, this is the only assessment that has a cover page and it has to be in this format. Now I created uh, a table of contents here that will sync up with your writing. So you have an inquiry section, action section with pre-production, production, and post-production, and then you have the reflection. All of these pages are already synced up with the table of contents, so please be careful. Um, if you want to update it, you just click here, and it will update the numbering. I figured that would save you a hassle of having to do that all manually, uh, which is a waste of time. The technology will do it for us. You spend your time researching your work, looking into film language, justifying your statements, doing your whys and hows for your what statements. Uh, the rest of this can be filled out. What was your role? Our testing, there's two different sections in IB for assessment throughout the year, one in the fall, one in the spring. Ours falls in the spring. No, this is not your deadline. This is when IB needs all the material, and it takes a month or two to process everything. That's why all of our work is due at the end of March. So um, I still need to do assessments on the work. I have to send that off to IB. They then need time to process. So anyway, that's why our calendar is set up the way it is. But you will fill this out. Film production role taken, so this is your main role. But if you did other roles, that's fine. This is the one that matters for assessment. This is what you're gonna write about down here. This might mean you were, you were the editor and you were the director, okay? So the director is what you're writing about, but this is just kind of saying you were editor and director because you were in a team of three or something like that, okay? Um, 200 words or less, the core team agreement. This is gonna be really important uh, because if you don't have a solid statement here and it's not evident throughout all your work how you had to compromise and communicate and make decisions to achieve this as a team, you are not going to score very well. Hold on, let me scroll up here. <laughs> um, the collaboration piece is huge. You need evidence of how you collaborated, how decisions were made, how you got through issues where you had to revise things, but it's working together in a team. This is you showing off that you know your job. This is that you can collaborate with a team to actually make something significant. So it's really important to make that differentiation um, and uh, keep that in mind. Statement of how music, so this right here, if you have any music in there, you must have a statement that it was made by students in your team. Now, uh, you may have heard me say that, you know, we have students and so on that are in class. What I'm gonna do is revise that and say, in your production team, if you're making the music, that's fine, but you need to make a statement about this, okay? Um, if, yeah, if you have any music, because it is such an issue with copyright and Creative Commons stuff, you cannot have anything that is not created by your team. That has to do with graphics, music, anything. All intellectual property must be your own. It's so crucial that even if you use loops in GarageBand, you're, you can't. If the loop is just dumped into a track and then used in your film, duty, 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 whatever they have in GarageBand, if you don't significantly manipulate that, um, it's seen as using uh, intellectual property from somebody else. So we have to be careful with that. That's why you want to read the comments that are in, hold on, right back up here, the um, subject report. That's This is IB saying, be careful. This was what didn't work. This is where kids lost credit. So you want to be careful with that. Um, log line, you know what that is. And clean whatever the, the length of your film is, it has to be seven minutes or less. And you cannot go over 2,000 words, but to put the word count here. All right, there's that. So I'm glad I went back to that. All right, now moving on to the portfolio. So let's start in reverse order here. This is also a table of contents and is automatically updated. And you will be filling in the information here and when I scroll down here, you will see, depending on how many clips you have, if you have five, six clips, 30, you can have not less than 30 seconds, but you can have up to six clips at 30 seconds each or whatever. I just put four here thinking that might be a nice number. So you have your title, you have how long is the clip, and then a few short words, um, not necessarily the log line, but you wanna keep it short so it doesn't go off the edge of this line. Keep it short. Um, and that's important. So filmmaker's intention, boom, boom, boom. And that is where you'll fill this in. Again, when you look at the assessment, you'll know what that is for whatever role this is. Okay, that's the same for all three. And for assessment um, number three, you have one clip up to three minutes. This is again, 
a celebration of a longer piece where it, it's shown that you have control over this particular role throughout a longer piece of film. Now, the way this whole assessment was designed is for experimentation in film roles. So you're taking on three different roles, you're trying out different techniques that you've learned about, and everything I've read from different IB assessors is that you do want to put your best work in here. So if you have something that's really lame but it gets better over time, there's been a lot of debate about this, that you want to have your best work in here. That's why you're spending a good chunk of the year continually working on creating films to get better at those roles. So every time you make a film, have a clear intention of what you're trying to accomplish for your role. Definitely research who's good at that, what techniques you want to try, and expand your vocabulary, vocabulary of film terminology for your job. And then how is that executed properly in various films or clips of films you've seen? And then how are you going to try that out? And not just one thing. You want to try a number of things. And so the more you work with film, the better you get at production. And the reason we spend so much time about workflow and getting our class to be more efficient is that you need time to experiment with these things. And the more films you make, the better. But you also need more time to be efficient with your time to be able to research and try out new things. Okay, so if things don't work out exactly the way you want, that's fine. But generally speaking, you want to be succeeding enough that it shows that you're growing and that you have um, uh, enough experience. All right, so back up to the top here. This is fairly similar. You'll notice that November 22nd, your first reel and pages are due. Somebody will proofread that. I will take a look at it. And that's where you're going to get the most feedback to make sure you're on the right path with the whole structure of this assessment. This is probably one of the worst assessments for people following directions when it comes to formatting. And so I want to early on make corrections so you understand what the expectations are. Then you'll notice that you have quite a bit of time to continue to add to your portfolio. Not until March do we need a real two and pages two and then three two weeks later. So you're going to be working quite a bit and then wrapping up and putting together your documentation and making your reels later uh, in March. So um, this is right toward the end. Everything is due at the end of March. So that gives you maximum time to work on things. Again, these right here are the same as what you just saw before, but this is specific to the um, uh, portfolio. And there's a lot of information here. So you want to take a look at it. It's multiple pages, six or eight. It's not hard to read. It's just that you want to be thinking about this for what uh, to expect. Definitely take a look at the subject report. Lots of good feedback there. Uh, planning. This slideshow is incredible for things to consider about how to research and, purport, you know, and put together material for your portfolio. But if you look at this before you're you know, doing a lot of films this year, it's going to help you think about what you need to focus on. Uh, very similar to things you've heard me say in class. It's just a nice way to see it. Here are the same posters we saw before. This is the same website, but it's highlighting a different section for the portfolio. And again, good information in here. Really good stuff. So you should check that out. Uh, the rubric. Okay, the IB's official rubric. Check that out. And then this is something new. Um, I didn't show you this for the uh, film project, but we're going to use this in class this year. And so we have all these different things that you want to consider uh, when you're putting it together and writing notes. So we'll be using these in class extensively because it helps you know what kind of questions to ask. So for instance, what shot are you using? Well, why are we using that shot? You know, what does that shot represent in the context of this film and the subject matter? All this stuff will help us document. And so we have scene one, scene two, scene three. This is going to help, I think, quite a bit in planning out um, things we need. And we can print this out when you're in production so that you can write down things and keep track of takes for scenes and clips and so on and so forth. That's going to be really helpful. And again, back here on this document, it's right there as well. It's also linked in our Schoology uh, pages. Um, we'll be using, again, all year long. So I will have it linked proficiently, you know, uh, not proficiently. I'll have it linked in many places. Uh, throughout that you can see. All right, now moving on to, I'm going to close this out. We are now talking about the text analysis. Uh, this one, again, I'll start from the bottom up. You have a template 
that has been used in the past to pretty, pretty good effect about breaking down the different elements with examples of how to approach text analysis. Uh, just a reminder, you'll be doing this over winter break. You'll be watching a film and then watching it numerous times, taking notes, and as Drew said when he zoomed into our classroom and talked to us about it, the first time you watch the film, be careful to not have interruptions and have a piece of paper or something next to you to write down um, your response, your emotional response to different things that happen in the film. You can't do that twice. It has to be your first gut response, emotional response, and so on. And he had said, and this is, he said it perfectly, that's going to be where you find the most interest in the film. And then you can dig into film language, cultural context, other things that are going on. But that first initial spark, if you're distracted, you're watching it on too small of a screen necessarily, but not saying a small screen is going to be a problem if you have headphones on and you can kind of allow yourself to be immersed into the world of the film. That's the important thing with no distractions. I strongly urge you to put your phone on, on airplane mode or let people know it wherever you live that you're going to need you know, need two hours to just go in and do this and it's something really important. Um, then take a look at this template and see if that helps. I put it at the bottom it's not part of your paper, it's just at the end, but I put it there as something for you to reference. The paper itself, we have a works cited page at the end, and you have this at the top of your paper. So you'll have the name of the film, and again, I'll give you three films to pick from. You pick one. Who's the director? What sequence are you going to do a deep dive analysis of? It's an up to five minute chunk of the film where you're going to talk about what's going on in that five minute chunk and show off what you know about film language. You have up to 17, 17, 1,750 words or less to make a case about a number of different things. Those things are these things. So when you look at these elements, how in that five minutes are these things conveying the message of that five-minute chunk? Now, there could be two different scenes in that five-minute section. It has to be a continuous five minutes. So you want to look at the film and think about what would be a good section what good five-minute section would help you celebrate what the filmmakers are doing to convey the emotion, feeling, uh, message of the film through these various elements? So here's it. the extract is that five-minute chunk. Then how does that connect with the rest of the film? That's really important. It can't just be standalone. You have to say this is important because, because, and then... Um, how does it connect to this film, other films? You can talk about other experience and other films you've watched where certain uh, things are happening related to this scene where a character is demonstrating something. You say, oh, in this other film, I noticed how they used a uh, different approach to get the same effect. And then um, social, social cultural context is this film that you're, that you're watching was made in a culture at a certain time. What was going on in that culture? So if it was made in the 1950s, if it was made this year, what's going on in America, in England, in India, wherever that film was made, not the content of the film, not the subject of the film. So you can have a film that, uh, a Chinese film that's talking about something happening in um, some other country. Well, it's still a Chinese made film, so it's what's happening in China at that time that you need to consider. That's the social cultural context. Okay, and again, I have a lot of resources for that. In fact, a number of them are here. Here's the website, again, you can go check out resources here. Uh, that's really great. We have the rubric. This uh, worksheet, this is something different you haven't seen, but I have a template that I strongly advise you start with. So let's say you watched your film once, you wrote down notes about things that grabbed your attention. Cool. Then watch it again and pay attention to sound. Then watch it again and pay attention to uh, director's intent or camera movements or other things that are related. Now, to help you with that, this if you copy and paste this blog post into your blog, you can see other students work with previous films. And yes, Handmaid's Tale, the first two episodes were something we studied in the past. Um, I'm saying in 13 and a half hours, <laughs> it sounds like a lot, um, you can have a really good handle on the text analysis. Let me explain. Breaking it down, step one, two hours. Watch the film. Okay? So right here, um, it's going to be a big part of that. Uh, maybe, actually, no, not watch the film. Preparation. So I'm looking, I'm breaking down how much time to spend on each one of these things. 
okay? Right here, right here, right here. So I'm trying to guide you through how to manage your time. Um, again, we talk about this all the time in class, but I'm putting, I'm putting my, my money where my mouth is, as they say, or something like that. I'm, I'm giving you an example how I would approach this assessment. And that's why I wanted you to take a look at this. So in here, I have resources. I want you to delve in. Some of these you're going to have already seen in what I put in the template for your text analysis paper. Then, um, so two hours to go through all that stuff. It, trust me, it's worth it. Then pick your film, right? Watch it. Okay. And then go through here. And do I say watch it twice? I can't remember. <laughs> but <laughs> at four and a half hours, um, let's say you're watching a film and then you're coming back through here um, and you're going through. Now, this was from a previous year. So just ignore this. These are not the films. Um, but you can see Drew had his guide. Um, you take a look at that. And so you watch film and just kind of go through the notes here and follow these ideas. OK. Choose your extract. Okay, now this is where you're going to pick a section and you're going to go through and take a look at these things. Now, a lot of this stuff you're going to say, well, I don't really remember what this means. That's why I have these links here. So you click on this, it's going to take you in so you can re-educate yourself or, or learn for the first time what some of these things are and what is it, what do you think it means in this particular clip. So you're going to be doing some research about that. Then continue researching with social um, cultural context, which is important and delve into that. And then you rewatch your scene over and over and over. So in this case, you're looking for all these things. You're gonna notice things. Every time you watch that five minute chunk, you're gonna you know, see things pop out. All right, then compose a rough draft. And I have a bunch of examples in here of things you can use. And right here, task components. This is all broken down from a um, template that we've used for a number of years. And you write on the right side and you go through here and this is going to help you structure your ideas. Okay. And so the stuff on the left side is questions and ideas for you to consider for that five minute extract and then how that five minute extract connects with the rest of the film. Okay. So you can see this is quite a bit of stuff and then I put a place for you to put your sources. So, um, you can see proofreaders and yada, yada. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of this is what we'll be doing. Now, this was developed a couple years ago, and it is whoop, right here. Um, you know, this is the template you're using to write your actual paper. But um, that web page, that web post, is for you to kind of get all your ideas organized before you start putting it together in this kind of structure. If you follow the blog post, um, it's going to help you tremendously organize your thoughts and get things in a structure that's going to make sense for you. Okay, and again, there's a lot of resources in there, so please spend the time. Um, again, follow my timeline, and I think you'll be in really good shape. So, wrapping up the text analysis, there we go. You have stuff there. Um, right here it says start your paper on the next page, so that's why I start from the bottom. This gunk needs to be at the top of the paper. And then the rest is just single space. Um, and when you look at the formatting guide, 12 size font, it needs to be Arial or something with, without serifs on it. So I've already used a font that will work. Um, yeah, there you go. Moving on to the last thing, the comparative study script. Now the comparative study has a number of different components. It's a 10 minute or less video essay you're making. But you really need a script for you to work out the logic of your your thesis and how you're going to support that. So let me start at the bottom of this document. I created a whole bunch of cells for you to write your script. What you're going to have on the left side is maybe a three second clip from movie X, right? So you just write down what it is. This is going to help you keep track of what we're seeing on screen while you're talking. You're going to write out word for word what your narration is over here. And it's going to take a number of revisions to get it to work right. And you're trying to make a case. And so the best thing I can say is that when you look at the top here, this is for feedback. When our first draft is looked at um, right here, the due date, you're going to get feedback from somebody and they're going to write stuff in here and they're going to highlight these things in your script. That's going to help you tremendously to see, you know, if you're following this rhythm well. Um, you'll put 
your essay in here, but only after your script has been read a, <coughs> a number of times by somebody else, by myself. You, your script needs to be really tight with the logic and your argument. Um, if that's there, the rest of it actually falls in place really well. Um, if you take that seriously with writing the script, you're going to be in really good shape. Then it just you need time to put you know the editing together and so on. So script is due here. You get feedback from a proofreader. I give you feedback from you know on it, and then you continue working on your essay, which will be due <coughs> at the end of January. Sorry, I need to drink more water. This is a long video. Holy cow! So if I haven't put you to sleep yet or <laughs> whatever, if you're not really paying full attention, yeah, whatever, that's fine. Uh, at least you're still here. Um, now, that this is the same, but again, assessment directions for the comparative study. So please read that, um, so then you know what's going on. This, <coughs> um, we'll, we'll watch this in class. Great advice, and then his final uh, was scored perfectly. So you should take a look at these. His advice is incredible. I used his advice to build that blog post template, and when I say blog post template, I have one for the comparative study as well. So not just the text analysis, we have, oh, look, there he is. We have a comparative study template. And this worked really well in the past for students to organize their thoughts. And so when you go through here and you start putting information in, okay, you're just filling out the right side over here. This is going to help you start to structure where you're at. Now, uh, in class, we've already talked about coming up with a concept and we're going to get that going right away so you could jump in here and start filling in this material. If you're having a hard time getting you know, research that supports what you're trying to do, that's an indicator that you need to pick a different topic or, or modify your topic. So um, all of this stuff is here to support you. And um, I don't think I put a total time on top of this one um, because this one's a little sloppier. It's not like you sit down and hammer it out. Um, it, it takes a lot of false starts, and we need time for that to happen. But the steps do work, so I really want you to follow that. So this is all prep stuff before you start writing your script. When you then start writing your script over here, that's when you know you start putting all the pieces together. But you really want to have done a lot of research first and really worked out your idea before you start writing your script. Okay, so in here we have that. The posters again, the website again, the rubric. And um, remember the subject report. You definitely want to dig into that. And um, uh, this is a link to the website, to my website right here. It's the same thing. So I just have you a link, gave you a link over there as well. So, <clears throat> wow, <sighs> so much stuff. Coming back here, you'll see that um, when I click on, for instance, the comparative study, here's your video essay. This is just a folder for you to dump your video in in its draft form so we can take a look at it. And this is a link to your script. Everybody has their own copy. You are the only person who has access to it right now, you and myself. And um, all of this structure and this long video is to save time in class because if, you know, class is hard. I, I want you to have as much class time to be working on collaborating, researching, doing your inquiry part where you're doing research on film roles and how to do those roles and you know, raising questions for me because I, I can help you. I just need to know what you're trying to accomplish. And uh, I want class time to be more for production, for the collaborative film project, and for adding to your, oh, what are we doing? Your film portfolio. So just in each one of these folders, you'll see right at top is links to your material, and in this case, older stuff. But in these folders, I have a lot of stuff. And you're going to see, this is the exact same thing as that blog post. Um, but the blog post, I think, works better because it has a place for you to write your stuff in. So I copy and pasted that there earlier because um, I can't remember why. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I think that wraps up. So in the comparative study, text analysis. Um, yep. Okay. And we have this. The due dates are at the top. Uh, all this triangulation of information so that you have it in multiple places. And uh, in conclusion, these four documents we just dove into are there to have you put your material in there, your first draft, your super rough stuff, and just continue working on them and keep all your information in one place. I have access to it. You have access to it. When we do the peer review, it's going to be way easier. And when it comes to the final submission for IB, we just scrub all this stuff off the top, and then we have a finished product that we can then I can export out as a PDF file once I know you're done 
and uh, then I can ship it off to IB. And the stuff that's internal assessment, I will then be able to assess that and send that to IB. All right, I know it's been a lot of stuff. If you got this far in the video, I want you to send me an email and tell me a joke, something clean and something appropriate, but just know that you're humoring me by the fact that you survived this long video of explaining all of our IB process this year. Um, I appreciate that, and thank you again for watching and paying attention, and uh, have a good one.